why it is important this day, why it is fundamental, why it is an exceptional opportunity these days to, to study computer science. And uh, what are the, the real and actual opportunities that, um, and the real projects and the world challenges that uh, we, we can face. And the people that are going to study and uh, get a degree in computer science these days will have to face an enormous amount of, of interesting challenges, of world-changing challenges. Um, okay, this. Uh, um, um, so many things have been uh, have been said about myself, and you can easily find uh, information um, if you Google my name, because there are not not many not many people actually with uh, with this same name. And uh, I'm I will be ready to answer questions uh, uh, offline about any of the. Um, research projects or research interest or any of the activity I've been involved or I'm involved to. So if you want to, if you are interested in any other things that is not just CBSE, you can certainly uh, write me an email or contact me on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is uh, Manuel Mazzara and um, my, my name Manuel is an Hebrew name and it means God with us. While Mazzara is the name of uh, a relatively small Sicilian town, which which is as uh, which has a Phoenician uh, origin, and it means citadel. It was actually a fortress. This is also very interesting from the historical point of view. It took me probably 15 years to understand this information, to to get the information. So now we are living in a fantastic new era. There are question marks and exclamation marks in the slide, you see, because uh, uh, actually it uh, it really depends on, on us. It really depends on what we are going to do, on how we are going to react to the challenges that... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Madam, uh, we can yes. see your screen. Are you sharing your screen with us? Because we can see your screen. You cannot. No, now it's black. Oh, now it's black. It all went black. It all went black. Actually, it's... Uh, uh, I, I'm clicking again this the green button here. Mm -hmm. No one. Uh, okay. Let me see. Now, because it says okay, people now can it's, see you. Now it's, now it's, yeah, it's working. Now it's, yeah. Can it's you working. make it bigger? Yeah. Can you make it bigger? Uh, sorry. Can you? Can you make it bigger? Can you make it bigger? bigger? Ah, all right. Uh, it it is actually hundred percent. Okay, now we can okay, see now we can everything see is okay. Everything all right. Is okay. okay. Go ahead with the So, all right. Uh, so, uh, the, 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 um, the opportunities we have today are, um, are really, uh, okay, problem with audio. Mm. Can, you, can you hear me well? Well, I can hear you. We have this well. problem with audio. Well, I can hear you pretty well. Mm, well okay. I'll ask that in that's, that's strange. Okay. Well, I'll ask that in you. Just a second. Anyway, so we have an uh, uh, enormous amount of challenges uh, these days, and uh, the, the fact that I put exclamation mark and question marks in the, in, uh, in the title of the slide is because it really depends on how we are going to react to the problems the world has today. There are enormous amount of problems, from uh, uh, energetic problems to political problems to uh, overpopulation problems, and uh, many of these um, uh, prob social and health problem can be actually solved through computer uh, computer science and IT in general. So it, the people that are going to um, live today and study computer science today will have to face uh, serious challenges. And uh, actually the, the, the fact that we can build a better world, it's really all in our hands. To extend the, the um, uh, the, the, the speed that um, is um, affecting our days. Just to think about some of the major inventions that have been uh, deployed uh, over history, like the Gutenberg press uh, to print books, uh, or the steam engine, the first industrial revolution, telegraph, and think that between one and the other, m most often they have, there are centuries. So, so between the Gutenberg press, press and the telegraphy of three, four centuries, and just just to make an example, but now things are much faster, and uh, this is actually the, the Vatican uh, Library, and think that the information of the Vatican Library, which is, it is enormous, huge, can can be only found uh, can can 
the, the same amount, not, not this precise information, but the same amount of information can be found these days easily online just Googling a keyword. So in the past, the, the situation was much more complicated. For a scholar, for a researcher, uh, you had to travel to the city. And uh, so with, with all the problems related to the, to the trip, to the travel, and you have to find the, the right book, the right piece of information in this huge library. And probably just the, the information retrieval was an operation that could take easily months. While what, we could, what had to be done in several months in the past, in the past it means even 40 years ago or 30 years ago, uh, now can be done actually in a few minutes by pretty much everybody with uh, some basic, basic skill. And this is possible because some people, a number of people, invented the, the, the theory and the technology to be able to connect us to the world by just, by just a simple cable. And in most of the cases, we don't even need a cable because we have Wi-Fi technology. And of course, all this invention, all these major changes in, in technology and in society brought uh, uh, important uh, um, changes in our everyday life too. So up to probably 20 or 30 years ago, the kids used to play outside, play football or whatever sports, it really depends on, on the culture, on the square of the small, uh, the, of the small cities. and. Uh, and that was the way of socializing. In the school, uh, people used to pass information to each other, writing with pen and papers. And, uh, but now everything is different. Now there are many people uh, that actually all the teenagers and the young people generally communicate uh, pretty much only uh, via, via mobile phone and, uh, and Facebook. So uh, this is uh, a major change. Of course, there are many sociologists that, that are studying the, the problems that can arise from this major uh, shift in, uh, in the way that human being, human being socialized, because this, has been, this is a new thing. This never happened in the last thousand of years, of course. And now I want to show you a five minutes video that I don't know if Tanya wants to, or, or I can project it. Okay. Uh, Manu, now it's time for the video. Okay. Um, can you can you pause it? Yeah. So, uh, yes. Dear listeners, I'm I'm dear going to send you the link, and you should go to YouTube. Yes. And uh, see the yes. video. Okay, it's a 60 minute video. It's a 60 minute video. It can be better this way. If you go to YouTube. So now I'm sending you. So now I'm sending you. Right. Yeah, you should go to YouTube and watch the video. And watch the video. And then we'll comment it. Yeah, later after. Yeah, later after. Watch the video, right? Yes. Let me know if you Let have any difficulty opening, opening this link. You can use the question box. Use the question box. I think we can watch the video, yeah, and then after the video, yeah, and then after the video, we will make comments. Exactly. Thank you.
professor. You may also uh, play the video. Professor? You may also uh, play the video. Yes.
Okay, are you still there? Uh, yeah, I'm here, and I think I'm everybody here, has yeah. questions here. Everybody has questions here. So now the yes. Okay. Is yes. So many of the um, many of the consideration that uh, you you watched in this video are UK based, but still this doesn't change much. I mean, because in every country you you can find uh, the same. The, the the major point that I want I want to comment and, and to introduce also uh, consideration about computer science is software engineering is, is then in the video you can basically and not only in this video there are many articles discussing the fact that when you take a three years a university degree what, what actually you study could be outdated during these three years or maybe just afterwards but there is a important difference I, I want to comment between the two verbs to form and to inform and this is the substantial difference that we, we I mean we are gonna give you not just the information so we are not gonna make you aware of something we are gonna shape instruct you educate in a way that what actually you are learning at the university will be not outdated by just a, a change in technology okay or a new product coming out or a new operating system or a new paradigm for development uh, the cartin uh, is in his discourse on method uh, describe what we we know today by the method of science this is a very interesting book that you may be interested in reading and you have to understand that computer science has its method too and to have a significant change in the methods of computer science it involves a major shift so if you learn the basic if you learn the fundamentals if you learn the methods it's very difficult that your knowledge will be outdated just in a few years okay and and by the way you you are learning way of thinking way, way of thinking mental structures a toolkit of methods and uh, conceptual tools not only software tools and with this toolkit of uh, methods and way of thinking you will be very good at solving problems and when you have the skill of solving problems um, this is not something that uh, will be outdated very easily so this is what we will try to give you in in this course and of course in every in every other course so more than describing a technology we we will of course describe technologies but we will give you the understanding of how this technology relate each other and how this technology are built and now you can think about the foundation, the fundamentals of these technologies. So we are going to always um, giving you different alternatives. So we will describe different technologies, different frameworks, different paradigms, because I, I notice very often that especially in, in the scientific community, people learning a specific method or a specific tool, they tend and they pretend and they want to apply this tool for everything. Okay. So there is the famous Maslow law. Maslow is the scientist who described the pyramid of needs. And he wrote a very nice book about psychology of science. And he said that it is tempting if the only tool you have is a hammer to treat everything as if it were a nail. So if you know only one tool, you will be persuaded, you will be somehow forced, and you will be tempted to use that tool. So I think a big mistake that we could do teaching this course and of course every other uh, every other course is that um, I mean we should really give you a toolkit a different uh, uh, set of um, of methodologies so that you can try and understand to apply the best for each different case so you will learn the basics and the fundamentals you will learn technologies and especially you will learn to learn so very difficult that your knowledge will be outdated unless uh, of course uh, there will be a major shift happens a major scientific shift happens happening but this is very unlikely so you can trust that what you are learning here um, for, for from many points of view is similar to what people um, were learning in the 70s in uh, or in the 80s plus modern technology so you have a big advantage because you are studying the same fundamentals but you are studying more modern technologies and if you combine this uh, uh, this knowledge this information in the right way you will be easily become a, a, a very good professional in IT or in computer science why why do we need software engineering we need software engineering for many for many reasons 
one of the reasons that without without precise technology we can incur in, in major problems. These are just some of the most famous issues in, in IT history. For example, 1999, uh, the Mars Climate Orbiter actually uh, went into a wrong trajectory and disintegrated into the Mars upper atmosphere because there was uh, one model uh, providing information uh, in... Um, okay, I, I will tell you this later because this is just an overview. And the, well, another one, another major problem is the, probably many of you know, this is 1993 when the floating point unit uh, of the Pentium uh, processor had a problem. Another one I want to mention is the, the faulty Soviet early warning system in 1993. Okay. For each of these, I will suggest you um, an article uh, that you can read on, uh, on the Wired, you know probably this magazine, Wired the website. And um, you see that this uh, metric math mistake. So basically, there was a piece of, uh, of software that was calculating the force uh, in pounds. And there was a separate piece of software that was assuming that actually it was not pounds, but uh, it was the metric unit. It was newtons. So, and this is, it's a trivial, it's, it's a really trivial uh, mistake, but this is what happened. And this is also a nice article, the man who saved the world doing nothing, and uh, it describes how actually this uh, officer, um, Petrov, Stanislav Petrov, that was working uh, uh, with this um, uh, monitoring uh, um, system that was monitoring uh, all the, the ballistic activity, and actually uh, there was a mistake, and, the, and the, the, human, the human, his human decision prevented a, a big catastrophe. So I, I, I will uh, really advise you, I really advise you to uh, go deeper and deeper into these uh, topics because only if you understand the, the, these faults and the potential damage coming out of, of this, sometimes this damage has been fixed by the human intervention, but some other it, it couldn't and uh, some disaster happened. So we need software engineering, so we need uh, uh, basically, systematic, discipline, and quantifiable approach uh, to develop uh, and maintain software. Because another problem is maintaining software, is maintenance. Okay, we are very good at building software, but then we, we have guaranteed that software is going to be is going to work and it can be updated efficiently for years and years after his deployment. Okay, so this is what software engineering is. And inside software engineering, of course, there are many subtopics. One important topic that we will discuss is software reuse. If you look at um, general application, this is a general picture of general application, there are so many standard reusable parts like a graphical interface, uh, the deployment, the data model, communication, and there is usually uh, up to 30% of standard reusable parts and 70% of application specific code. So, why do we need to rewrite all the time that 30% that if we can reuse? So software reuse is one of the major questions, one of the major issues of software engineering. And so what, what we do is uh, basically there, there is a methodology called divide and conquer, which is inherited from, from politics, where uh, divided timber in politics is basically about gaining and maintaining the power breaking up uh, uh, concentration of, of, of powers and splitting into pieces so that each of the opponents uh, cannot be strong enough to, to attack you. Now, this is a very well-known strategy in politics and also military strategy. It is, is well-known since the Roman time. We have the same divide and conquer in software engineering where you have a big problem and you want to separate and you want to divide, you want to organize this, the big problem in smaller problems and then still smaller and smaller and you get components. Components uh, is, is not a new concept because it comes from thermodynamics, it comes from uh, chemistry and uh, but it is also applied to electronics of course and more recently you apply it to uh, like this Lego uh, pieces you can apply the same concept of components to computer science and software engineering. So, the definition of software component is a reusable, sustainable software artifact. So, a packaging of executable software with published interface. The interface are necessary because other pieces of code need to know 
in a simple way what that actual component is, is doing and, uh, and will do. And then you need, of course, a, a glue code to put the pieces together, a component framework. But we will discuss this in detail, of course, during the course. This is just a general overview. Software construction is about uh, taking these small pieces and put it together in, in a way that you can get the, the final application. So the, the, the real application that is meeting the requirements of your customer or your, your, your requirements. So we have reuse, reuse of code, divide and conquer, and software construction. These are three major points that we will discuss in details during the course. Why uh, the composition of software is so important? For many reasons. I'm going to uh, here present just two of these reasons. One is the fact that you can formally, mathematically reason on code. And in this way, you can do very easily, because uh, you can calculate the properties of a system combining uh, the properties of its subsystems. So if you have the system S, which is the composition of the component 1 and the component 2, the meaning, PS means the meaning of S, is a function, uh, the, the meaning of a, of a component is a function from inputs to outputs. This will be discussed during the course and especially will be discussed in another fundamental course at Tinopolis, which is the theory of computation. Okay. So basically, the, the, you can uh, um, project the meaning of the two components and obtain the meaning of the, the compositionally, the meaning of the major system. Okay. So doing this way, you have what is called functional modeling. So the system is modeled by composition of functions. Okay. So you can reason formally, mathematically, on the components and on the system. So if you know how the components are behaving, you can state uh, properties of the full system. And this is one, in, from the mathematical point of view, is, a, is, a, a point, uh, is an aspect of major importance. But there is another aspect uh, of um, component-based development, which is productivity. In this diagram, you see over time, from the 70s to most recent years, how basically we went from uh, unstructured programming, even before, in the 50s, from structured programming with uh, languages like C, object-oriented development, and component-based development with C++ and Java. And then there is a more recent thing, which is agent-based development. But this is something that we will not discuss uh, during the course. Just a little bit, but not much. We will go through some technologies. As, as I told you, we want to teach you methodologies plus technologies. So we cannot discuss all the technologies in the course, but we will give you the, 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 the instruments to learn more technologies by yourself. But we will go through this technology, remote procedural core, RMI, CORBA, NET, software-oriented computing, cloud computing, and uh, of course there will be exercise, a lab exercise, and we will go into the details of each of these technologies and, and frameworks. This is just an example. Uh, for two reasons, I want to give you this, this example. First of all, to show you one of the technologies and one of the paradigms. Second, because this is an UML activity diagrams, and UML is a semi-formal specification methodologies for object orientation and component development. We will deeply, deeply describe uh, and use during the course. So you will see many of these diagrams. You will see many, many programs uh, described using these diagrams and many others. Okay, this is just one of the many diagrams uh, used by the UML, Unified Modeling Language. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, in, the, in the last part of the course, we will describe cloud computing. Cloud computing is, uh, is a very recent thing. So actually, the trend uh, over the last 40, 50 years was uh, uh, going from centralized systems, so mainframe, to uh, distributed systems, like today. But now we are moving to the next step. Cloud computing is a new way, basically, to centralize again the information. So you will have this, like this picture I took from the internet, these mega data centers. And basically, all the services, all the software will be offered by a service, which is not physically located anymore on your machine, but is somewhere else. So it's we are going, we went uh, uh, from 
centralization to distribution and now we are going again back to centralization but in a different way because it's a mix of centralization and distribution. This is interesting. We will discuss this later. So uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. I will try to answer all your questions today or of course offline in, in the future. Thank you.